What's going on, folks? That Sports Gamer here. We're back with episode 36 of Bullpen Banter. As always, for the last couple episodes, uh, I am joined by Snaggle J, a.k.a. Chris. Buddy, how's it going on? How's it's it going good. On? It's 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 going. <laughs> it's going good. You know, listen, we're having we're 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 having some uh, you know minor difficulties, but that's over now. And uh, you know, we're doing stuff. We're good. We're testing out new stuff, and uh, we're doing. It's you know, it's because we're so excited to talk about gameplay and and new hit animations and bunch cheese so questions fun. and retro mode. We're just we're so excited, y'all. It's. I'm so excited that I've started cheating in MLB The Show 16. That's, like, that's how I, exciting it is. I have heard you've been cheating in uh Yeah, in I, I, apparently I've heard I've been cheating too. If you haven't apparently already, I've... make sure you uh, head over to Twitter, follow Snaggle J, at Snaggle J. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can see him being accused of, bunch of, no, of uh, lag switching. Lag switching, yep. I, I don't even know what that means. Uh, it's a lag switch. You have one. I can feel it. I have, yeah, I can, I can. Oh, here it is. There it is. I don't think it makes that. I really don't think it makes that kind of a noise. Well, because I wouldn't know. Also, if you did it, I think we would have problems on the stream. Probably. All right. So, if you're watching this, I assume you already watched uh, the Sony stream last night. Uh, we're going to be talking about the stuff from that tonight here on, where are we? YouTube.com slash that sports gamer. Twitch.tv slash that sports gamer. This is a bad, we, sh we should definitely not do Friday night streams. Uh, next week, Thursday, maybe we'll do it Monday. I don't know. Follow on Twitter at that sports gamer. Hit the, yeah. I don't even know. Turn the notifications yeah. on on YouTube so when we go live, you know. Uh, so if, go ahead. And if you, well, if, I was just gonna say, if you didn't watch, if you're one of those few people who didn't watch the Sony live stream, you have probably come to the best place to get all the also, information that you need to know. That is also highly correct. I would assume. I would assume it's correct, like hundred percent. Yeah. So this week. Take a look at the content calendar. Uh, this week, they did the gameplay and retro mode deep dive. Uh, next week, on the 15th, they're going to be doing the Dynasty uh, Diamond Dynasty stuff. Uh, so we're definitely going to take a look at that. Uh, I believe we'll be live on the 16th with another bullpen banter. We'll try to get Paul Spore on. Uh, he loves that stuff right there. Uh, yeah, it was a great stream last night. Uh, Snaggle J, I assume you watched because we were both watching and sitting in our Discord chat talking about it. I absolutely sure did. I, I've watched it um, pretty much twice in its entirety now. Really? Well, the first time, I mean, this is kind of my process. The first time, I just kind of wanted to sit and watch. And then the second time, obviously, I went back and paused and made notes and made, you know, just general observations of things that I may have noticed that I just kind of wanted to enjoy it the first time. I just kind of wanted to go through it and just enjoy the stream. Just take and, it in? And take it and take it in like you know, like everyone else was, and then yeah, obviously for the purposes of being prepared for this program, I went back and watched it a second time and made notes. Sounds like a sucker's bet. All right, so all right, here we go. Uh, so last night they covered a bunch of topics. Uh, we'll just kind of go through them. Uh, I mean, fairly quickly. We're gonna try to keep this episode pretty quick. Uh, no gameplay tonight on the show, unless you guys want to stay after. We can play a little bit. Uh, but let's just, uh, let's just go through this. Uh, they got new ball physics to expand the hit variety, though I, I don't think this is the same, uh, rundown that they use for the show, because I think they did the catch stuff before that. Yeah. Uh, it's going to greatly increase the variety of hits possible in the show, curving grounders down the lines, bloops, Texas leaguers, and top spin line drives. Uh, physics are tuned re using real world video and measured home run distances to accurately model the path of the flight, temperature, and altitude effects. Uh, yeah, so they had, uh, they had the developer, I believe his name was Jeff, uh, that programmed all the new hitting physics and stuff. Uh, it looks really good. Um, one of the things, uh, they even mentioned it in the stream was, like, line drives over the second baseman's head currently, uh, just hang up way too long, and all the outfielders are able to get to the balls or make a dive and catch at them and stuff, uh, but now... Balls are going to be dropping in over shortstop's heads and over second baseman's heads. And when they go towards the line, they're going to be hit the line and go foul or go into foul territory. So you got to chase them down. Uh, looks real good. So, so the the bat on ball physics mm -hmm. was, was like, and again, 
I said this a little bit on stream on my stream last night because a couple of people had kind of pressing what I thought. Overall, my I was very impressed with what I saw on the stream when it came to the bat on ball physics. Again, very small sample size to see these guys run through, you know, a few different examples. But the way they showed the bat on ball physics and the hit variety and that thing, those things, I believe are game changing additions to this game. Yep. I really, really think this, like people always say, you know, MLB The Show is such a such a good series. It's in such a good place. How do you take that and make it better? Well, give me tens of thousands of different hit variety possibilities. Make, uh, you know, a Doug Fister more useful as a guy in Diamond Dynasty. Again, you know, the possibilities with this. Some would call a Doug Fister a poor man, Corey Cooper. Well, exactly. But in a diamond dynasty mode that right now is completely dominated by velocity, mm -hmm. you know, changing the way hitting works and the bat on ball works to make it more like real life adds a substantial amount of value to a guy like Doug Fister, to a guy like Corey Kluber, to anybody that is a movement contact based pitcher when you can induce poor contact. And that just doesn't happen in this game right now in 16. Yeah, you know who's going to be unhittable next year? Noah Syndergaard. Absolutely. With that power sinker. That's, you're, you're, yeah. yeah. It's, and I mean, like, I was so impressed with, you know, the ball slicing down the line and balls in the gap. Yeah. And again, one thing that I did take away from the stream is a lot of the pitches that these guys were hitting were middle of the plate fastballs. Mm. Like, what's this going to be like when these guys are trying to hit two seamers, like lefties trying to hit a righties two seamer, you know, away off the plate, yep. and they're chopping these things to third base constantly? Like, I really do believe that this bat on ball physics could be a substantial game changing addition. Um, yeah, I was a huge, I was a huge, huge fan. That was the highlight of the stream for me, for sure. Yeah, I think the way they explained it was in the past, the ball, when the ball hit the bat, it was essentially like hitting a wall. But now it's going to be like hitting a round bat. Yeah, absolutely. Which that's uh, the fact that that's going to be in there now is amazing. Because I've had so many in like lefty lefty situations, I will throw a low and away slider. They'll be late on it. And somehow they were pulling it for a home run. Yeah. Which I'm like, yeah. that is definitely not physically possible. Unless there's some weird gravitational pull that I don't know about that would pull a ball that way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, like, it just feels like that's going to be better. And I feel like that's going to open up Diamond Dynasty, actually, to, like, as you said, a lot of people are using just, like, flamethrowers out there all the time. Yeah. And, you know, going those high fastballs that can't hit them. But yeah. I think now the guys that, like, like that Cliff Lee card, the the prime flashback Cliff Lee. Uh, he, there you go, yeah. That's That card's going to be a beast now with that cutter and the, the, cur the big breaking curve. Uh, even though he's not going to get it up there at 95, 96 miles an hour, that's going to be a lot more effective this year, I think. Well, and that's the thing is, I mean, literally, raise your hand if you've given up a home run on a two-seam fastball a foot low out of the strike zone. I mean, it, it, it does not happen in real life very often that you can throw a two-seam or a sinking fastball out of the zone low and give up a home run. Yet in this game, it happens constantly. Because again, they in the way the physics are designed currently, the bat is flat. It's a square or a rectangle. So it's like the ball hits a wall. So it doesn't matter if you're a foot high, a foot low, a foot inside, a foot outside. That's why everyone has seen those that animation where you jam a guy inside and he brings his hands in and he hits the ball around the foul pole for a home run. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, everybody's everybody's seen that. Yeah, I think those days. I think this is going to be fantastic and i think the the people that it's going to benefit the most are the more i mean it's going to benefit everybody but the more the the novice to average level players who struggle in diamond dynasty because you know they give up too many home runs they give up too much solid contact 
this really helps them. I mean, for people who play frequently, I mean, we're very good at getting our PCI where it needs to be to make solid contact. And I think we will continue to hit the ball well. But for the novice and average level players who really struggle pitching because they just feel like they give up too many home runs, this will help them immensely stay playing this mode. Yeah, hopefully the next thing on the rundown is what we want to talk about. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm okay with this. Uh, AI will, the humanity AI, uh, AI will behave even more like a human, not always running to the exact spot of balls off the ball. Uh, CPU step-off timing, varying uh, fake throw timing, rundowns, base runner, and throwing decisions and all that stuff. Uh, uh, let me actually say, uh, the catch and throw engine stuff, new, more sophisticated system and hundreds of new animations, smarter and more efficient, new multi-branch system, a variety of throws can be made from the same catch depending on when you throw the ball as the catch is being made, balanced throw animations. I think with, um, I feel like this year we're going to feel, we're going to be seeing a lot more ground balls. And the stuff, if you have the amount of ground balls and that I think we're going to be seeing next year, uh, if you had the, still the same animation sets that you have in MLB 16, uh, I think that would be pretty much a nightmare. Uh, I mean, we've all seen shortstops just nonchalantly go after a ball and a guy with like 50 speed beating out a ground ball directly at someone. Uh, so I think that's going to be a huge... If that overhaul works, along with this pitching, I think this is going to be like a game changer for the series. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that 100%. I think that... Um... From a like from a diamond dynasty standpoint, I think this even more will prioritize the need to have a solid infield defense. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the funny thing about this is now that I get thinking about it, you mentioned the Cliff Lee. If you look back at a lot of the cards that they've released in the last, let's say, three months, mm -hmm. and the complaints that you and I and uh, have had about. You know, maybe these cards are more early season cards, but you look at some of these cards and you start thinking about what 17 is going to be like. So you start thinking, okay, well, Cliff Lee has more value now. Jose Iglesias and those defensive cards they've released have more value now. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they were testing the waters with these cards to see, you know, like here's 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 some guys. They might not be real valuable right now, but oh, baby, when you see what 17 is going to do, because infield defense is going to be supremely important. Um, the one very minor concern that I had about watching the stream um, is, again, very small sample size. But that double pump animation that I saw the shortstop perform several times, again, small sample size, but I saw that very similar double pump animation on a routine throw. I hope that was just coincidence. Like, I hope that's not an animation that's going to be... Mm -hmm all the time because i think i saw it three or four times just in that one little stretch where they showed it right but i think the thing i mean from what i understand it seems like the cpu players are now going to be smart enough to know when they can take that that double yeah hit. oh absolutely we also saw that a lot with the third baseman i don't know if you were watching uh when they were doing those little dribblers down at third base there was a lot of double double pumps and i think there might have even been like a triple clutch in there at some point uh, with one yeah. of the slower runs, uh, slower runner. So it looks like the plays at first are going to be closer, but the players are going to be making smarter plays and no one to take that extra time. And hopefully uh, you don't... I literally had uh, a, a ground ball hit directly at Tulo and it was hit like so straight at him that I didn't even have time to hit the joystick. He was already in the animation and he almost didn't throw someone out because it was super close. And he just took his sweet time getting it. Yeah, no, and and that's the thing. Again, you know, a lot of these minor concerns are are, are that like they're just things that I may have noticed. Again, I, I do love where the animations are at and what they've done with ground balls and with the AI, you know, recognizing a time speed kind of thing. It just it's so impressive to see how they are stretching every bit of memory that this console provides. Mm -hmm. for them to be able to make this game as realistic as possible. I mean, I can remember, you know, as a career third baseman, you know, that was something you always had in the back of your mind. Who's the batter? How fast is he? How quickly can he get down to first? If a ball's hit to my left, what kind of time do I have? If a ball's hit to my right, you know, do I have time to plant my foot and, and make that throw to first? And it seems like now they've been able to 
implant this into, you know, AI characters, which is just so mind blowing that they can put that amount of data into, into, into a game and into computer controlled players. It's just extremely impressive to me. Yeah, it's hard to build in like that internal clock of uh, how quick to make it. That's something you see in Madden a lot, actually. Um, like when you're dropping back with a quarterback and he's going to get hit. It, he, you never see a quarterback in Madden be like, I'm going to get hit. I need to make a short, uh, like a short, uh, a short motion throw. They always go through their full motion or their full throw on the run motion, no matter what happens, no matter if a guy's about to hit him or if he's got no one standing around him within 10 yards. Uh, so it looks like MLB is really taking a step in that to be more realistic in that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, defense versus pesky base runners get more focus. So, you know, they have the new uh, the new catcher stuff, uh, which I took a screenshot of here. Uh, so this is the new catcher uh, a meter that they're going to be having. Uh, apparently, if you have any throw meters on, this is going to be on. And it's not going to be a separate setting. So if you use a throw, if you use like buttons with accuracy or something, uh, you're going to be getting this behind the plate. Uh, so it looks like it it doesn't freeze time, but it like slows it down a little bit. Uh, and then what you want to do is you want to hit it uh, in the green as it goes up from the bottom. So you want to, as normal, you're going to want to preload the throw uh, as the pitch is coming in. This will come up, but then you want to hit it in the green for a good throw. Again, uh, just because you hit it in the green doesn't mean you're throwing out the guy. Uh, yeah. It's still going to depend on, you know, what the pitch is, who's running, what kind of jump they got, all that stuff. Uh, but green means it's going to be a solid throw. Yellow is going to be somewhere in the vicinity. Uh, but I believe they said it's not going to be like a wild throw in a center field uh, unless you hit that red spot up there. Yeah, no, this is, again, as they said on the stream, this is, you know, a, a way and an ability to give the user more control, you know, in one thing I always found difficult, in, especially in online games, is I don't often play with the commentary on or the sound on. I typically, you know, if I'm if I'm not streaming, I usually have my headphones in. I'm listening to something else. So without that audio cue to know that your online opponent is stealing, a lot of times you will miss that window to be able to hit the triangle button to get a good throw off the second base. Mm -hmm. Like there's a little bit of a... Like, like a split second lag there. And if you don't get it, you know, you don't get the throw. You know, this is a way to eliminate that. But again, it, it's about giving more control to the user. If I make a bad throw to second now, that's on me. It's not on some AI settings, you know, accuracy, whatever. That still plays a part in it. Obviously, better arm strength and better arm accurate catchers are going to give you a better meter. But still, if you mess this up, it's on you. And that is what I love about it. It's just, you know, it's given control to the user. Yeah, so it looks like, uh, depending on the quality of the, uh, I guess this is arm accuracy. That's what's going to govern how big that little green spot is. Yeah. Uh, so I was actually just looking in the game. Uh, someone like that flashback, uh, Russell Martin, only has 53 arm accuracy. Yeah. Uh, so I, I feel like that's going to be playing a huge role uh, going forward this year. Uh, what I was trying to ask in the stream, and I didn't hear an answer from, and I didn't get one uh, on Twitter, so I'm going to reach out to them again. Uh, if there's a pitch out, uh, I wonder if this if this green area is going to get bigger. You would assume, uh, you know, since they're not trying to like feel like not trying to actually field the ball, that they would probably give it a little bump. Uh, but I would like to uh, get a solid answer on that because I feel like you should get the bonus for you know picking a pitch that they're going to pitch out on, that they're going to be going on. Yeah, that makes sense. I like it's and like you and I talked about offline. I, I I do agree with that. I think that they could do something. Do I think they're going to? Probably not. I think it's going to be the same meter, regardless of whether it's a pitch out or not. And I think the justification for that is that the slight split seconds of time that you save by pitching out, you know, gives you an extra opportunity to throw the runner out. Sure. But yeah, I mean. You know, I, I have caught in baseball, and it, it kept throwing a guy out on a pitch out is much easier. I mean, you get to stand out, plant your feet, mm. you know, much easier and to throw an accurate ball. But, again, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, and I really want to know how this is going to be used in online. As I said, it, you slowed, like, 
time slows down a little bit when this happens. It's not com doesn't come to a complete stop, uh, but it goes into like a little bit of a slow motion thing. So I wonder how that's going to work online. Is that is that hopefully quick enough that it's just going to get lost in the camera camera change uh, for the team that's running? Uh, yeah, I'll be very interested to see this. Or is the is the team running going to see this? Yeah, I doubt it. But you never I enjoyed know. I enjoyed the slow motion um, plays at second base as well. Um, like when the awesome. when this when the stealing when the stealing um, the the steal plays at second were close plays, the the time kind of slowed down huh. on the oh, play. And actually, you know, maybe I only noticed this because you mentioned that. Uh, I noticed that a lot of guys were going for the tag better this year. Like if a throw was up over, I mean, if you're looking at where the guy is right now, the second base, or yeah, it should be the shortstop. Um, like if he was catching one like up by his right shoulder, yeah, you the animation for him coming back down to try to make the tag yeah. uh, was looking really good. I wonder if that's something they. I mean, who knows what the lead times are on this? But after seeing, uh, was it Javier Baez that was or Addison Russell that was slapping ridiculous tags on guys that on throws that should never throw a guy out that yes that they were getting plays with, yeah. Uh, so I, I wonder if so. that like pushed them to do that a little bit more more accurate this year. Yeah, well, my initial thought was maybe there's more, maybe there's some sort of tag, like user tag control. Mm. Um, but I mean, that I quickly, you know, got off of that train. I just enjoyed the fact that, like, again, a, a quick slow mo on a close play, I felt it added a bit to the game. Um, but yeah, like, I, yeah, it, I did notice that the tags were. Were were much more realistic looking the way that they were catching a ball and applying a tag. All right, so we got the second uh, set of features that they discussed. Uh, we can pull that up. We have uh, new gameplay animations, improved player uniqueness and personality, and uh, that breaks down into uh, additional new home run sequence uh, on base and post game player and team specific animations. Uh, we saw some of that stuff in the trailer with. Uh, what was it? The Red Sox doing the little luge thing, but apparently the Red Sox aren't even going to do the thing that was in the trailer anymore. So that's kind of funny that <laughs> that timed out. Actually, I think it was like the day the trailer dropped. That was like the day the Red Sox announced they weren't going to be doing that animation anymore. Well, you know, uh, we're getting that's... more uh, player-specific home plate animations. Should be good. Uh, new outfield post-game rituals. Uh, over 350 new and redone batting stances and home run celebrations. Over 300 new and redone pitching animations, hundreds of new gameplay animation or, or new presentation animations. Presentation animations is not something easily said. Uh, over a thousand new gameplay animations, more variety of pitcher reactions and catches, dives, double plays, throws, pickoffs, ball picks, uh, back picks, catches on the run, routine, backhands, forehands, jumping, uh, fielding, catching, DP, DP turns. Dives, relay throws, foul ball catches, catcher force out animations, and brand new varieties of catcher setups. Actually, that's kind of cool. New varieties of catcher setups. Yeah. So I guess they'll, uh, who is it, like uh, like Tony Pena would drop to one leg? Drop to one knee <laughs> that, that would be something. That would actually be really cool if they did kind of stuff like that. That, 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 would, be, uh, that would be something. Uh, but yeah, we saw some of the new, the new batting senses last night. That'll look good. Uh, okay. Let me tell you how accurate this stuff is so i was watching the retro mode thing and i kind of like wasn't really paying attention like i was looking at something on another screen and i was like oh kent amaeda is on the mound i didn't even know the dodgers were the other team <laughs> <laughs> but i'm yeah. like they they did his wind up so perfectly that just yeah. by like catching him out of the corner of the eye i was like oh that's him yeah and that was without the, oh, yeah, no. the crazy blurriness it's it's uh I mean I've always felt they do a fantastic job with the with the wind ups and the batting stances. I know what's the best way to put this without um upsetting a large group of people. There are always vocal people in the community who are just never pleased with the way they do batting stances and the way they do wind ups. I mean, you have to realize there are some limitations to A, the amount of time and B, the amount of detail they can put in the game. I've always felt they do a very, very good job of trying to represent what these pitchers and batters do in real life at the plate and on the mound. Um, 
you know, again, and especially for like the older, like the the legends and stuff. Uh, yes, it's not like it's not like they can really just go out and go get Nolan Ryan and be like, hey, can you come throw a couple pitches, hundred miles an hour, and let us do your body mocap and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> this is not a you know. I mean, would they love to mocap every single person in the game, like, ever? Sure. Sure they would. They would love everything to be 100% accurate. But some of this stuff, they, they you know, they have to go off of the data that they have. And I think they do a very good job. Again, a lot of the people who were in the uh, in the live stream were people who already had batting stances previously. Mm -hmm. There were some new ones, which I thought were very good. Yeah, I think they, uh, Did they update... Uh... They update Chris Bryant's. I think he's got his hands a little higher and the bat a little lower. If I'm I honest. didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice. I know they have they updated Chris Bryant's uh, home run follow through, which was I think in the one of the trailers. Um, but I didn't notice his batting stance. I wasn't watching that closely at that part of it. Yeah, I think someone, I think someone did realize that uh, uh, Jason Hayward had a new batting stance and stuff. So, but yeah, they're they're updating that stuff all the time and trying to fix the ones i mean i feel like there's nobody that just stands out as like this is a really bad version of that guy's batting stance yeah i, I actually want to see how griffey looks like yeah. because i feel like griffey was one of the ones that they used to not do good yes so hopefully now they've actually had him in yeah and i mean the other the other caveat of this too is still being 47 days, I believe it is, from release, or 48 days, or whatever it is, 46 days. You know, I'm sure they're taking the feedback and going back and maybe looking at tweaking a small thing here and there. This is very much a, you know, I mean, not to use the B word, beta, but this is a work in progress game. This is not a finalized game. So, you know, if 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 five thousand guys have contacted them in the last two days and said, "Oh man, Lindor's stance is so trash," uh -oh, you know, they're going to take a look at it. Yeah. Well, you got to figure they've got mm, two, two and a half, maybe two and a half weeks, depending on how far they can push it. Yeah. Uh, before this has to be like at the place getting put on discs. Yeah, I agreed. So. Uh, but, of course, all this stuff can be updated later because, you know, video games. Why don't we have a 60-gig patch on day one just for no apparent reason? Uh, I'm sure there'll be one. But, yeah, uh, I felt like everything I saw, I didn't see anything, like, really wonky. Uh, though they did show, they, they showed off a bug, which was weird. <laughs> uh, they showed that uh, 363 double plays were working uh, now, and the first baseman was getting back to cover uh, yeah. rather than the shortstop just lollipopping a ball over waiting for the first baseman. Uh, for the pitcher to come over and cover. Yeah. Uh, but there was still a bug where sometimes the first baseman would get caught up and try to come back and it would all get messed up a little bit. So they clear that up. But that seemed a lot better. I feel like that was a big problem last year. Uh, you would hit a ground ball yeah. at first base and he'd throw it and then you pretty much even a slow guy could probably still beat it out at first. Yeah. I, again, I was very impressed with pretty much everything they showed about infield. Uh, in terms of double plays, you know, the ones where the pitcher covered first looked very, very natural. Uh, the ones, again, you know, there was that small bug they showed off there with the first baseman kind of getting hung up, but the ones that did work looked very nice. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's for pretty much everything seemed to be steps in the right direction. Uh, yeah, Ryan versus Games just mentioned how... Uh... During one of the streams, I think we somebody mentioned that Cespedes' uh, batting stance looked really bad, and then like the next day or two, uh, Ramon was tweeting out a picture of him, uh, yeah. showing, showing him like working on correcting the stance. Yeah, I mean these the, these streams are they're two way streets, guys. I mean, it gives them an opportunity to show the passionate community what kind of things are in the game, but also gives them a chance to get feedback. Now. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the guy who has to sit and go through that chat from Thursday's stream because that was horrible. Marcel horrible. All over the place. Horrible, horrible. 
Well, not just with the keyword. I mean, I'm sure they could take the keyword, pop it into Microsoft Word, and just filter it out. But but just some of the comments and uh, I, I was trying to keep count of how many people got banned from the stream. I lost count at about 36. Um, like, it was just absolute insanity. Toxic, as as uh, Scob says, perfect word. More toxic um, than uh, the message you got after the game you played before you came on. Uh, more toxic than I got. Yes, the, the Sony San Diego chat was more toxic than a guy accusing me of cheating in MLB The Show 16. Hundred percent. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I for the most part I watched it full screen because um, I mean I had no interest in really interacting in the chat or anything like that. But it does show that there are two very different sides of the community, as most sports game communities have. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, they're taking feedback. You know, they're looking at this and saying, okay, how can we fix this? You know, is this something that we can address? A lot of people in the chat were talking about this. You know, I'm sure they've spent the majority of the day today dissecting, you know, what happened during the stream last night and, and where their path forward could be. Yeah, uh, one of the things that people had people going crazy uh, was they wanted to see what the bunting was like. Uh, and guys like, it looked like they were using the, uh, the final roster from uh, OTP, uh, from, uh, from LV this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they had some of the Cubs bunting and some of the guys bunting. And there were some that were like, you know, going foul and stuff, but the majority of the stuff was looked like it was getting laid down pretty good. Yeah. Uh, apparently they went back and looked at uh, some of the stuff that they were doing in the stream, and they realized that the pitchers were just throwing pitches straight down yeah. the plate. Yeah. Uh, so but, let's so, talk. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go. Uh, yeah, so one of the guys they were doing it with was uh, Wilson Contreras. Uh, so I just pulled up his card in uh, 17 or 16. They were doing drag bunts right down the line, like perfectly. And he has an 18 drag bunt rating. Now, granted, the pitch was right down the middle of the plate, but he was laying down yeah. like perfect bunts yeah. on rookie with, I think they were using like directional hitting and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely want to see it not on rookie and with pitches not over the middle of the plate. Uh, I do wonder how much of the um, uh, the new ball physics and stuff off the bat is going to be affected in bunting. Yeah. Uh, hopefully that'll make it a lot more realistic and make like uh, breaking balls a lot harder to bunt because I think breaking balls are still fairly simple to bunt uh, bunt this year. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. It was probably the biggest question mark of the stream for me was the whole bunting, uh, you know, the whole bunting presentation. Now, I'm not going to jump off a bridge and be like some of these people and some of these tweets I've seen that Bunchies is back, you know, not buying 17 because of Bunchies. I'm not playing DD anymore. I'm out. I'm done. Give me a freaking break. <laughs> but I am concerned based on what I've seen. Um, again, lots of reasons to think that the problem could be better all the pitches were fastballs down the middle. Now, any good coach will tell you it's actually harder to bunt a fastball than it is to bunt a breaking ball because a breaking ball is naturally dropping, helping you get the ball down, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, I just honestly, like my opinion of it is wait and see. The other yeah. thing that I think plays a big factor into this bunt cheese uh, issue from the stream is that Ramon was not there. And maybe more so than the guys that were on the stream, if anybody knows what the community has been dealing with in terms of bunt cheese, Ramon Russell is that man. So do I think he probably could have done a better job at quelling our fears about bunt cheese? Maybe. You know, not trying to make excuses, you know, or... or, or or pick on the guys that were doing the stream. I know there's been a lot of things said uh, in the 24 hours since then about the quality of the stream. I mean, just go to Ramon's timeline and look at some of the things that people have been tweeting at him about unprofessionalism, and whew, it's it's bad. 
So my advice would be just wait and see. I mean, they've already said they're going to address it on a future stream. Again, the yeah. bunting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was on Rookie, and the pitcher was coming straight down the plate. So I definitely want to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, I mean, that, hopefully that'll clear it up. I don't know who's really playing on rookie. I mean, I would I would like to see it on all star. Apparently, zone zone hitting doesn't make a difference, which no. I kind of feel like it should. I mean, yeah, you know, I, that, that I think the like bunting should. engine is the same at all levels. Yeah, that's that seems like I don't like how that works. I feel like it should yeah. be but like if you're using the PCI, it should use that information. Yeah, and you know, this is this is a good. Uh, I see Detroit sports guy in the chat saying people has a feeling people are going to be going bonkers after the DD stream in a good way. Mm -hmm. If it was if it was me, just playing devil's advocate, should they have let off with the Diamond Dynasty stream? Should that have been right out of the gate, go right to the DD stream? Mm, probably not. It's just, I just feel like you could have the DD stream without everybody asking about bunt cheese. You can have the DD stream. I think you, you're you probably better off having the DD stream last. You think so? Right before everybody is ready to buy it, get everybody like real psyched for Diamond Dynasty. All right. Because now you're doing it next week, and then there's still four weeks till the game comes out. Or five weeks. Yeah, that's true. Out. I mean, that, that's just me. Like, I, I just think that they, they would have had to know that they were going to get a chat full of guys that all they wanted to see was you lay down punts. Mm. And I felt like they I, were I not think you're get that prepared. Week. I think you're going to get that yeah, I, And I feel like they were not prepared to deal with that. Uh, I don't want to say criticism, but mm. I don't feel like they that, that Nick and Kyle were properly prepared to show off the improvements, let's say. Yeah, and I like that they're waiting on the Diamond Dynasty because I feel like there's a lot of people that are like, I think the real diehard fans are waiting for that stuff. I mean, granted, there's diehard fans waiting for all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully they'll, hopefully they saw like using the first episode as kind of like a, or the first episode, yes. the first stream as like a, like a practice run to yeah. get stuff like the mics working and the controllers charged and stuff. So that next week, uh, it'll be super smooth that sailing happen. and we can yeah. get through all the Diamond Dynasty stuff. Hey, let's keep talking about DD. I, I know you got screenshots of these cards. Listen, how, why would you assume that? We don't want to talk about retro mode? Do we, do we need to talk about retro mode? Looks, okay, look, looks cool, looks fun. We're going to play it once and then never play it again? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to play retro mode one time to say that I did, okay. uh, and I'm never going to play it again. Uh, a close personal friend of ours, who shall remain nameless at this time, uh, summed it up very well. Um, retro mode is not for us. It's not for the hardcore people. It's not for the people who play 600 games over the course of a summer. Retro mode is for the more casual people, who maybe having a couple of cold beverages with their buddies and want to get a couple of games in, and maybe they're not that familiar with MLB The Show. They just like to play it for fun. Red Remote is not for us. I think it's cool. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to try it once, and I'm going to move on. Yeah. Uh, Scob in the chat said, the big thing in all sports games people want is gameplay. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just feel like uh, like the Bunchies thing is like so specific. And I feel like that's real specific only to people that play online and I don't know how many yeah. people play online and people that play diamond dynasty, which is right. mainly you're playing online. So I feel like those, the diamond dynasty people are, I think, but I actually think the diamond dynasty people uh, are going to be more vocal next week about bungees. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. So we'll definitely see that. Uh, but yeah, the, the gameplay I thought looked real good. I wish they would have spent some more time. Cause like, I remember uh, last year's stream, they spent like, how long did they spend just like watching outfielders take routes to balls? like 20 minutes of a stream i felt like it was ages and i enjoyed every second of it yeah and i felt like this stuff was kind of abbreviated this time hopefully they'll yeah. go into some more of that stuff a little bit more depth uh in the future yeah. ones because they yeah. had a lot to get through in this first one so yeah so i agree i agree with lt dubs by the way I, not a lot of people making making big hay about the graphics mm -hmm. um, i did see a few negative tweets for whatever reason um, but I thought the graphics and the lighting and everything, which in MLB the show look phenomenal every year, mm -hmm. um, I feel like they were improved yet again, which I don't know how they keep finding room within the engine to make the graphics and the lighting look better. Yeah. And we saw some of the presentation stuff. I, I thought it was a little, little too candy-ish, but 
Uh, yeah. Let's, let's let them get through all their presentation stuff and see how it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, two things that go along with that. One, I always find hitting at, is it still called Progressive Field, Cleveland? Mm, yes. Okay. I always find hitting at Progressive Field to be very difficult. I find that there's way too many things going on in the skyline when a pitch is, say, like middle up. Mm hmm. I always had trouble picking up the ball. I watched the stream back, and I, I noticed that seemed to be a little bit better. They added a little more dark color to the backdrop, which was nice. Uh, and the other thing I really enjoyed of all the changes they made, I know they're going with this new light-based theme, but the pitching meter was so nice looking, the yeah, way they've redesigned it. Is that how it's going to be, where like you're not going to see the bar go up? Because I saw some of it looked like the bar just like wasn't even implemented. Yeah, I, I don't know if that had to do with the, the stream quality. I mean, I know they said it was 720p, but man, oh man, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that was 480i tops. Yeah, uh, um, I was actually, the screenshots that I was able to take, uh, the 720p version was on Twitch afterwards. Yeah. So I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why it wasn't, because it really didn't look that good to me when I was watching the stream either, but. Yeah, but no, I, I did, but I did, I the, the, for some reason, the pitching meter popped out really? to me. I just really, yeah, I really liked the way that it looked. I really, because I didn't, uh, I did not. No. In multiple, Hold on, I got uh, Let me, uh. To each his own here. But I, can... I just thought the darker kind of, the darker kind of color of it, I found it very easy to kind of see where the meter was going. And hmm. Yeah, maybe I just couldn't see, like, the. There wasn't, yeah, there wasn't great contrast in the stream, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Maybe that's why I couldn't pick it up too much, but... Yeah. But yeah, uh, we'll see all that stuff in the presentation mode. Uh, retro mode, we said, that's not really for us. Nope. We'll check it out a little bit. But, but you can see that they avoided trying to say RBI baseball. They also avoided saying Kangaroo Junior baseball, which is kind of interesting, but... That's obviously despite, the fact that, despite the fact that the color scheme of the fonts basically is Kangaroo Junior mm -hmm. baseball. And that's why they have it in here like if he was exactly the server, i doubt that modes in the game um, yeah i mean yeah i, I do I, th I mean they alluded to on the stream that you know ken griffey jr equals retro mode like they kind of have alluded that having ken griffey jr on the cover made them consider it strongly blah 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 mm -hmm. so hey yeah. is what it is i guess uh so you mentioned diamond dynasty earlier uh did it show off two cards one uh is the rookie ken griffey jr that everybody that pre-orders will get now do they have to do anything for this card or do they just get him right you just pre-ordering you you pre-order the game and this 81 silver 1989 rookie ken griffey jr is yours yeah and uh, as you can see they changed how the uh the thing works uh so under the rating you're gonna have the r for rookie uh and the year yeah uh, so that's very interesting yeah, oh, I'm yeah, I'm glad they're going to apply the different levels to legends now, which is nice. Yeah, and you can see it right on the front of the card rather than having to like click in and try to find out what it is. Yes. So, uh, that looks pretty good. Oh, we got the stats here for them: uh, 73 contact versus righties, 32 contact versus lefties, uh, 62 power versus righties, 45 power versus lefties, uh, 71 vision, 67 clutch, seven, or, sorry, 71 vision, 67 discipline, uh, 70 clutch. 38 bunt, 32 drag bunt. He did lay that bunt down that one time when they were playing the shift on him. Uh, 69 durability. Uh, but where this card is really going to shine, he's got 85 fielding, 91 arm strength, uh, 71 arm accuracy, 85 reaction, and 84 speed. Uh, yeah. So with 85, with 84 speed, 85 reaction, and, and 85 fielding, I feel like he's going to be getting to pretty much everything yeah. out there to center field. Yeah. So K-Spots is picking up on the line that they dropped when they were talking about this card. This is a card you want to keep in your lineup from day one and maybe making reference to it having some kind of mission. Mm -hmm. The way that came off to me was that they were trying to talk up the attributes of the card. Um, I honestly can't see them giving a pre-order rookie card that is going to give you some sort of mission to get Diamond Ken Griffey Jr. I mean, you know, maybe I, it comes like later. later. Yeah, I could see like, that. Like, I they're not, they're not giving, <laughs> like, like, they're not giving pre-order guys. Yeah, they're not giving pre-order guys Diamond King Griffey's. Yeah, it's not happening. Um, 
it's a nice card. I mean, you know, he, he's going to hit righties pretty well. To have this guy in your lineup on, you know, day one um, or day five, if you have four days to get the servers going, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, um, you know, again, with a renewed focus on, or not a renewed focus, but with this new focus on batted balls, I think fielding um, is going to be super duper important. Yep. Um, so, you know, great fielding, great arm strength is great. You know, center fielders to have a 91 arm strength for a center fielder is rare in this game. Um, 84 speed is nice. He's going to hit right. He's nice. It's an, it's an, it's a, it's a wonderful card to start your season with. Mm -hmm. You should have to find someone between them against lefties. Yep. But you know, 81 silver yeah. off the bat. It's really good. Uh, yeah. I like him. As you said, he's going to be all over the outfield. 91 arm strength is going to be a cannon. He's no, uh, He's no Kenny Lofton out there with a noodle arm. Uh, should be pretty beastly. Yeah, and you can platoon him with Rajay Davis. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you want to keep that speed going. Yeah. Uh, and they did unveil another, a new... Oh, man. A new legend uh, coming at MLB's Diamond Dynasty. Get me this card. Uh, a, ooh, I didn't resize the picture on that one. A 97 overall Warren Spawn. Uh, this is going to be a postseason flashback, as you can tell by the PS. I actually don't like that R for the rookie cards. Yeah, not a fan. I mean, tops. what does tops do? They do the tops all rookie. Should just use the tops all rookie logo. Mm -hmm. The little gold cup thing? Yep. Well, that's just me. But uh, 97, postseason flashback for 1958. I believe Tips was giving down the rundown uh, of why this card is going to be beastly. Uh, let's take a look at the stats. He's got 99 stamina. Uh, again, this is the postseason flashback. Uh, so it's just based off that one postseason that he pitched in. Uh, what do you say? It, he pit, had three games, went 3-0, and oh, and went more than nine innings in every game? Yeah, he went 28 and a third innings in the playoffs that year. Nice. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty solid. Uh, amazing pitch mix. He's got the four-seam fastball, curve, uh, screwball, slider, and change. So he's got stuff breaking every which way but loose. Uh, 96 hits per nine, 93 Ks per, or 83 Ks per nine, uh, 71 walks per nine, 58 home runs per nine, which we know doesn't matter. Uh, 95 clutch, 73 control, 69, 69 velocity and 80 or 93 break. Now you notice something, tell me what you noticed because I've already forgotten. Um, well, I, I mean, a lot of people have noticed it, but the one thing they said on the stream was that this card can touch 97 miles an hour with the fastball. Mm -hmm. And his velocity rating is 69. So either they misspoke, which is a possibility, but or velocity has been rescaled. Which would um, be good. Which would be good. Again, a lot of people were saying the velocity could be scaled, you know, mostly because of, of a role as Chapman. Mm -hmm. But still, I mean, there's 90s, some other guys that throw that throw gas. There, yeah, but there's no guys that throw 105. <laughs> you know. So true. Um, but the thing is, still, even still, if you're go if you're touching 97, let's say his average fastball velocity, fastball velocity is 95. As a 69 rating, I it's I still don't get it. I know they said on the stream that player ratings are not finalized. So maybe that was an error. Maybe that 69 velocity was supposed to be an 89 velocity. Well, here's the thing. I I want to say that the, the ratings for these Diamond Dynasty cards are finished. I don't think you would show the ratings if they weren't. Yeah, fair enough. If they weren't done. Granted, for the live series, like the guys in the video... Uh, they were probably just working off the old old roster and stuff, so I understand yeah. saying it there. But I don't understand why you, why you would show the attributes if yeah. that's not what they really are. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I I do I agree with you 100. percent But I mean, again, it, it 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 leaves that question: How does a guy with 69 velocity throw 97 miles? Are is the velocity on his other pitches so slow that you know, that they have to have a lower velocity rating, 68 mile an hour screwball and a 70 mile an hour curveball and a 78 mile an hour changeup. Yeah, it could be something like that. Because it's not like his fastball is 93 break. Yeah. So maybe, they, maybe they are just showing that a little differently then. Yeah, me, yeah. again, maybe the velocity is re, 
work. Again, a lot of people had red flags when they said touches 97 and has 69 velocity. But yeah, there could be 15 different explanations as to why. Yeah. All that really matters is please someone tell me how I can get this card yeah. so I can stick him in my lineup and never take him out. I'll break because if, in, uh, MLB if, if, if this dude is throwing 97 with the cheddar and then you got that 70 mile an hour screwball and you got curveball slider unhittable this card unhittable yeah give me i want it now yeah give it, i want it in my face hold I'm, I'm just trying to think huh how are we going to get this card uh something tells me it's going to be some sort of new ish kind of mission format to get him I don't know. just it a could, hunt it could, he could be like the well, I don't think he'll be the Braves 40 man. He could be like the Command and Conquer or Command oh. thing. Red Sox is killing me. If he's a 12 win B, 12 win BR card, I'll never get him. He could be a BR card, yeah. I, I suck at BR. I'll never get him. Never mind. The dream is dead. Uh, yeah, so next week uh, on the 15th, they're going to do the Diamond Dynasty deep dive, talking about events, seasons, programs, missions 2.0, new legends, and flashbacks, etc. Uh, I feel like that's going to be a stream where I'm going to have to download it and then, like, page by page, just or like second by second, see what cards come out. Remember they had that uh, that one trailer a few years ago where they just like showed like 15 cards in one shot, and I went through that thing like second by second, getting screenshots of it all. So yeah, yeah, no, I, I I'm 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 pretty pumped. I feel like when we do this stream next week, it's going to be like four hours long. Yeah, so I don't know if we're going to do a stream Monday, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, but we'll probably do Thursday. Uh, this stream is on Wednesday, so we'll probably Wednesday, do Thursday. Yeah. Uh, because I have the OTP stream Wednesday nights. And I'll yeah. need to watch this once, maybe twice. So, oh, yes. Several times. Uh, so we'll definitely have a lot to talk about there uh, next Thursday, the 16th. Probably 10 o'clock, maybe 9.30. Uh, just make sure you're following us on Twitter to... Well, we'll yeah, go 10 o'clock because I stream NHL Thursday night, so we'll go a little bit later. Although, for talking about Diamond Dynasty, maybe we could cut that off a bit early. And nobody cares about hockey. Everybody cares about hockey. Nobody cares about hockey, Boomer. Somebody, give, me, give me a one in the chat if you enjoy my franchise. Nobody, Just saying. Nobody does. I'm, uh, I'm not getting a single one. And uh, if you want to check out the franchise, you can head over to YouTube.com slash SnaggleJ uh, yes, and see can. that. Uh, you can also follow him on Twitch, also at SnaggleJ. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter at that sports gamer, uh, youtube.com slash that sports gamer, twitch.tv slash that sports gamer, where you're probably watching this, uh, unless you're Gomes the legend, because you're on youtube.com slash that sports gamer. Check look it at, out. And at, Cole look Payton. At look at this is why I love YouTube gaming. Uh, we've got Gomes the legend and Cole Payton, 79, hitting you at twos. So in your face. Yeah. yeah well, on the Twitch chat, I got. Got homies like Detroit Sports Guy and K Spots, Mr. CPU Geek dropping the ones. This is exactly why I don't want to use Twitch anymore. I would like to go switch over to YouTube full time. So we'll see. The, uh, the, the Snagaholic movement is real, kids. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if you guys missed anything, uh, the archive hopefully will be up tomorrow uh, on YouTube.com slash that sports gamer. Um, we're going to end the show here. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, but if you want to play me, I'll maybe play a game or two tonight uh, after the stream. Maybe I'll stream it. We'll see. Uh, just hit, drop me a line in the chat. Uh, but yeah, Snaggle J, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Really appreciate it. Always, always a pleasure to be on Bullpen Banter. Well, hey, that's what we're here for. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching us. Uh, hit us up in those places. Instagram.com slash that sports gamer. I haven't posted anything <coughs> over there, but make sure you go over there. I need I need them likes. I'm going to start doing some like semi sexy pictures so I can get all those likes from whoa. all those creepers. Whoa. Hey, Got to do it. Got to do it for the hits. All about them likes. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Take it easy, folks. Oh, you know what you guys should do? Oh. Get out of the bullpen. Get into the game.